How's it going, guys? Today, we're going to learn the concept of multiprocessing in Python. And if this video generates enough interest, I will create more videos on multiprocessing. Now, multiprocessing is used to run code in parallel. At the moment, when you are writing a script, all that Python code that you are writing is being executed one line at a time. This means that if we have a task that takes a lot of computational power, we have to wait for it to finish before moving on to the next line of code in our script. So essentially, our program is frozen until that function finishes, which kind of sucks because modern computers have a lot more power and can easily execute several tasks at once. And just to turn this into an analogy, imagine you have one worker who is mining coal. And we're going to call this worker Bob. Now Bob is mining coal and can only mine one piece of coal at a time before moving on to the next piece of coal. Bob is miserable because he has to do all this work alone. Even if he sees hundreds of pieces of coal, he can only mine one piece at a time. Now imagine nine more workers join Bob each one of these workers can mine one piece of coal. And that means that we are now mining 10 pieces of coal at the exact same time. And the best part is that as soon as one worker finishes mining a piece of coal, they can move on to the next piece of coal. So now they are constantly mining 10 pieces of coal at a time. And that's exactly what multiprocessing is. Running tasks at the exact same time, instead of waiting for them to complete, one by one. Now, I know how much you enjoy my stories, but let's move on to a practical example of how you can use multiprocessing to speed up code that is CPU bound. To get started, let's import some modules. First, we're going to import time so that we can time our code. Then we're going to import OS to see how many cores we have on our computer. Then from typing, I'm going to import the any type and the callable type, just for typing in Python. And finally, from multiprocessing, we can import pool. And what's nice about multiprocessing is that it's part of Python's standard library, so we don't have to install anything. Next, we're going to create a function that takes a lot of computational power. It doesn't do anything useful, really, but it does some intensive math, and that's all that matters here. And this function is going to be called expensive function. All it does is multiply n by 2 100,000 times. And I really want to stress that this function was created for demonstration purposes only. You can obviously optimize this according to your needs, but I just want to show you how multiprocessing can speed up our code here. Now down below, we're going to create a function called single process, which takes a list of numbers. And for each one of those numbers, we're going to pass it into the expensive function and return the result as a list. What's very important to note here is that we're calling the expensive function several times. We're not just calling it once. So here we need to wait for the result each time we call the expensive function, which is going to end up taking a lot of time, especially if we have a lot of numbers. Next, down below, we're going to create a function called multiprocess, and it's going to contain the exact same signature. It's going to take a list of numbers and return a list of numbers. And we want to do the exact same thing, except here, we're going to use multiprocessing. So what we're going to do is create a pool as pool and return pool.map. And we want to insert the expensive function. And the arguments are going to be the numbers. So for each number, it's going to call the expensive function with that number. And then it will return the result as a list. But here we are creating a pool of processes. And we're using a context manager to facilitate the cleanup process. With will automatically call close and join for us to ensure that we don't end up with zombie processes, memory leaks, and other predictable program behavior. That's why I'm using with here. And this is all it takes to use multiprocessing. Of course, you can dive much deeper into multiprocessing, but for today's video, this is all I'm going to be covering. Next, we're going to create a function that can time this code. So what it's going to do is take a function, which takes any amount of arguments and returns a list of integers. And then it takes some args, which should be passed into that function. So here we will get the start time, call the function, and we will retrieve the total time once we're done with that function. And here we will print the function name and the total time formatted to three decimal places and return the total time. Next, I'm going to create my if name is equal to main check and my main entry point. 
And the very first thing I'm going to do is check how many CPU cores I have. And the amount of CPU cores tells us the amount of processes that we can run in parallel. In this case, I have 10 cores, which means I can run 10 processes in parallel. But the performance may vary due to system overhead and other running processes. Right below, we're going to create a list of 20 numbers from the range of 1 to 21. And the first thing I want to do here is assert that both of these functions return the same result. And right now, if we run this, what we should get back in a couple of seconds is nothing, because this check passed. If this condition fails, we will get an assertion error. As you can see here, if I insert one, it's going to raise an assertion error. Then down below, we're going to create the single process benchmark. And to do that, I'm going to create a variable called single time. Then I'm going to get the time for the single process with the numbers. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the multi-processing time. And I'm just going to call that multi-time. Then at the very bottom, I'm going to print the speed up, which will be single time divided by multi-time formatted to two decimal places. But now let's run this and see what happens. And as a result, you'll see that this function took much longer than this one. And that's because with multi-processing, we were able to use multiple cores, which means we were able to run this expensive function in parallel with other expensive functions and return those results as soon as they were ready. While with the single process, we could only return one at a time. We had to wait for this complete before starting it again for the next number. And that's the benefit of using multi-processing. We don't have to wait for an expensive function to finish before starting another one. We can use the cores we have available to start several of these at the exact same time. It's very important to note though, that starting a process is much heavier than just running the code directly. If your code isn't CPU intensive, then using multiprocessing might even slow down your code. So make sure you only use it when dealing with CPU intensive operations. Here we're getting a good result because we're starting this function 20 times. But if we change this to a single number, such as one and one, you're going to notice that multiprocessing took longer because calling a function directly is much faster than starting a new process. So that's something you need to keep into consideration. And one last thing, when we use pool, a new Python interpreter is started for each process. So we must put things inside an if name is equal to main check to prevent Python from running this code every single time we start a new process. And just to show you what I mean, if I were to write something such as print hello Bob, this is outside of the if name is equal to main check, which means that every time we start a new process, this is going to be called. I mean, watch what happens when I run this script. It's going to print hello Bob. Then each time we start a new process, it's going to print hello Bob. And we definitely do not want that. So make sure when you're using multiprocessing that you put everything inside an if name is equal to main check. This will help prevent new processes from calling code out in the open. And on a final note, do not mix multiprocessing up with multi-threading and async IO. Those are designed for IO bound tasks, while multiprocessing should be used for CPU bound tasks. Of course, if all of this interests you, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll make more videos about it. But otherwise, that's really all I wanted to cover in today's video. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.